going vegan will ruin your health. Here is five reasons why. Stay tuned to find out. Hello, hello, welcome back to the Stay Fitness channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Daniela. I'm a fitness, nutrition and life coach specializing in obesity and diabetes management. So today's video, I'm going to talk about five reasons why vegan diet, a vegan diet will ruin your health. Um, so just a bit of a background uh, for my motivation for this video. So I am a former vegan who's been trying to get healthy, to recover from going vegan for only eight months. Uh, it had detrimental effects on my health. I gained a lot of weight. I was insulin resistant. Uh, it wrecked my gut and all that. Uh, so then I started, I adopted a nutrient dense diet, which fixed uh, most of my issues and now I advocate um, to for everyone to adopt a nutrient-dense diet that will heal many issues uh, from metabolic health to mental health to gut issues and all that and uh, so yeah basically uh, is is uh, January so the, now uh, everywhere you see uh, veganary veganary Veganary, so yeah, vegan January basically. People doing like um, basically this vegan January challenge, and I thought, is it a must? At must, most urgency that I do this video to try and stop as many people as possible from um, going vegan, or at least to do to invite everyone who is considering it to do your research, listen carefully to what I say, and then Google those words to find, really do your research, find the truth. Don't just listen to uh, influencers like me. I'm not saying that you should listen to everyone I say. I just want you to get like, stimulate curiosity to do your own research. Uh, Cause you should never just listen to one person. And, um, and I just want to also disclaim that I don't really hate anyone, I'm not against anyone, or I'm just against misinformation. And there are ways to put information in a way that it seems like it's something that is not. And I just want to make this video to kind of clarify certain things, how you should think certain things, how you should research certain things to get to the actual facts, not just wishful thinking essentially. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first reason going vegan will ruin your health is the lack of nutrient-dense bioavailable nutrients. And the word nutrient-dense bioavailable absorbable nutrient is really important because it's a massive distinction saying um, this veg X vegetable is uh, rich in X mineral or vitamin or nutrient, but is it bioavailable, aka absorbable? Because something like let's say spin, like is a really easy example is to use spinach. Spinach has more iron than steak, which sounds ideal, isn't it? But we absorb only 1.7% of the iron in spinach, but we absorb 20% of the iron in beef. So it's a massive difference. Like, so even though something like a vegetable or legume or anything like that can have a certain nutrient, might seem really ideal, uh, but is it, is it bioavailable? aka absorbable by us, it's like you need to think of nutrients as a currency for our body. If your currency is British pounds, but you keep using euros, it's not gonna work, isn't it? So you need to eat nutrients that are in a form that you can actually utilize them and absorb them. So when it comes to so many nutrients, I'm talking like so many, so iron, B12, creatine, omega-3, all that which might seem like you can get them from plants or in like supplement form, it's really difficult for the body to absorb. Like if you take a vegan iron supplement, you need to take like three times or even more the dosage to hopefully get enough. And iron is not just about anemia or all that, it's like 
brain function is immunity like immune system like is these nutrient essential nutrients are vital for thriving as a human being so it's not something you can just hope you can achieve like through um, supplementation or combining foods or whatever you try and like putting vitamin C on spinach like orange juice and fingers crossed it gets absorbed being nutrient deficient is dangerous like if you like B12 your brain will start shrinking omega-3 our brains are uh, made 60 or something percent of omega-3 so if you lack it it's really detrimental for the brain uh, iron for immune system general like well-being so there's so 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 many like uh, creatine can make you uh, can really enhance brain function as well and nutrient density and nourishment have nothing to do with how much food you eat even if you eat 10,000 calories a day of food, you can still be malnourished. So I just wanted to drill this concept into you. So when you research uh, where to get calcium, where to get iron, where to get this, where to, look at bioavailability and absorption. Don't just look at how much, how many grams each food has, because that doesn't say anything. Uh, so I hope I made that clear and um, so yeah this was the first point which is lack of nutrient dense bioavailable nutrients and is the probably the most in one of the major problem with a vegan diet is malnourishment um, second point is lack of bioavailable absorbable protein so protein is often kind of like so that just people who go heavy at the gym, lift weights, needs protein. Protein is the most abundant substance in our body. Our hair and male protein, our skin um, is used in so many functions, used to repair the body, both internally and externally. So if you hurt yourself, you have a cut, you break your leg, protein will help with the repair but there are studies that vegan vegetarians heal slower because and is mostly uh, because of lack of collagen and lack of protein because that makes uh, skin, bones and any tissue repair in our body, muscle repair. Um, so yeah, you, that's the thing. If you look at how, many, how much protein chickpea has versus steak or a piece of chicken, you might see this very similar but what you need to understand that we have something called amino acids and in order to create protein we need to eat at the same time all nine essential amino acids to make complete protein so uh, often you hear yeah you need to eat beans with rice to make complete protein but you need to like what that hap what happens with that is that you end up eating to get 10-15 grams of semi-decent protein you need to end up eating so many more carbs and so many more calories which then end up being too many calories probably way too many calories in terms of food but not enough nu nutrients and protein for your body weight essentially so what often happens which happened to me is that you eat a ton of carbs with a vegan diet, um, a ton of food which made me um, insulin resistant, um, had metabolic health, like big gut, like big belly and all that which happens really often and uh, I've, I've seen it with my own eyes, I trained so many people, so many people in and out and I see that overeating these starchy foods can easily lead to metabolic syndrome uh, and lack, lack of protein can really contribute to that process because protein is it's pretty amazing we absorb 100% of it when you eat any type of protein from animal foods it absolutely never gets converted into fat uh, and it always gets utilized for so many functions in the body so you can overeat protein and it's never going to cause any weight gain and actually 30% of the protein gets 30% um, of the calories from protein gets burned through digestion um, so yeah um, my point is you can get protein from a vegan diet it's just not 
bioavailable, it's not actually converted into protein. And um, even if you eat soy and stuff like that, that's a problematic too, which take, it's gonna be in the next point. Um, so yeah, getting enough protein on a vegan diet is gonna be extremely difficult and it's gonna be extremely difficult to try and keep some sort of calorie budget, which I don't mean like that you need to be in a calorie deficit, you need to only eat 1500 calories a day, because that's not what I'm promoting. It's just if you eat 3000 calories a day of mostly carbs, it's not gonna be good for you. That's it. <laughs> which takes me to the next point is um, high, omega-6 to omega-3 ratio so um, vegan diets are often high on omega-6s because of the type of foods you end up eating so like soy, soy product, uh, soy is very high on omega-6 um, and then you end up eating those kind of burgers and fake meats and all that those are all added sunflower oil, canola oil uh, very high inflammatory foods is actually was there was one post was really funny they compared dog food uh, ingredient list with uh, like uh, impossible burger or something like that and actually the dog food almost seemed like it had better ingredients it's just hundreds of ingredients that you don't even know what they are and all of these contributes to high level of inflammation in the body which can lead to like inflammation can lead to all sorts of problems from like joint problems, mental health problems, digestive problems, like inflammation is just bad news for the body. So being on a vegan diet without consuming any high inflammatory foods is again super hard because what you're you gonna eat? If you're not gonna eat soy, you're not gonna eat fake meats, you're just gonna be, yeah you can eat just lentils and all that but let's face it most people that does the goes on a vegan diet me included when i was on a vegan diet you end up eating all these fake foods again which look at the ingredients that's why i want to say just don't take my word for it go look at the ingredients and see how much literal crap is in those burgers that you pay so much more like two beef burgers like really good beef burgers grass-fed all that costs like, I don't know, three, four pounds. Two of those impossible burgers, cause like five, six quid, have really little protein, super high in fat, cause you just pump them with like canola oil just to make them taste of something. And you get no uh, nutrient density from it, n nothing. You just, it's just flavor. And every like, every time that like, I don't know you eat uh, pulled jackfruit instead of pulled pork but there's no nutrient density there's no protein you're just eating fiber flavored like pork it's pointless uh, and again it goes to my, my second point you just end up eating excessive carbohydrates and very little protein or any good saturated fats which takes me to my next point which is vegan diet will wreck your gut again i was vegan and oh my god like you go number two you poop like 20 times a day like 20 is exaggerated of course but you poop like three four five times a day often is a break of diarrhea um cramps bloating is because you're eating all these foods that are so hard on your digestive system because what people don't understand that we are not ruminant animals we are not rabbits we are not we don't have the digestive tract to be able to digest all these plant foods just look at the our anatomy of our digestive system as compared to a rabbit we don't have the large intestine that is long enough to be able to digest all these foods uh, so saying oh we can just cut the process and take get everything from plants no we need the animals as a middleman to process the plants and turn them into bioavailable protein that's what cows do they can eat grass and make saturated fat out of it we can't do that uh, and that's why cows have multiple chambers 
stomach chambers to do that so it goes in phases we can't do that so what ends up happening we have this over fermentation our large intestine overgrowth of bad bacteria which causes gas and bloating is not normal to be bloated every day yeah you can be bloated once in a while you had one food and maybe didn't really agree with you but being bloated on a daily basis and in the day always with a pregnant belly uh, going to the loo three four times a day is not how humans were meant to be it's ridiculous why would nature make us like that, that we need toilets constantly like um, now we're constantly farting <laughs> it makes no sense if you eat meat meat is digested in the small intestine it's no fermentation from meat and meat gets absorbed so well there's very little waste so actually if you do a carnivore diet you'll see that you go number two very little not even every day and it's not constipation it's just that the food you're eating pro like produce very little waste poop is waste is what hasn't been absorbed by our bodies so if you poop four times a day it means that most of the food you're eating just goes to waste you haven't absorbed it <laughs> which takes me to my last point which is vegan diet will have detrimental effects on your mental health and this is no joke there are multiple studies showing that vegans and vegetarians are prone to anxiety and depression and this is because of lack of nutrients when you have lack of nutrients lack of protein high levels of omega-6 that cause a lot of inflammation your brain will suffer which will lead to imbalances in the brain chemistry which can lead to anxiety and depression and yeah it's no joke like do you think it's really worth having anxiety and depression mental health disorders just to be vegan i don't think so i think there are ways to be a meat eater still respecting the nature still respecting animals and be healthy because being healthy is the best thing you can do for our planet you won't need hospitals you won't need medication like where do you think medication comes from labs labs that pollute the planet labs that test medication on animals what else can we test them on and like hospitals are extremely wasteful like single-use plastic and all that every time you need blood test test all like the best thing you can do for the planet is being a healthy person so yeah all I wanted to say in this video wasn't like an attack to veganism like I'm sure that many will perceive it like that it was just to like ignite curiosity in anyone who is con considering or if you are vegan right now and this maybe triggers a little bit there's no shame in doing a bit of research just have a google on nutrient density complete protein research a bit of like like there's so many studies like that vegetarian and vegan kids are like slower with lower cognitive function they're shorter like how lack of iron can cause problems just like while pregnant can make babies not as healthy uh, how vegans heal slower like wounds and stuff like that and how vegans are prone to vegans vegetarians prone to uh, mental health disorders and look at populations with a higher uh, meat consumption the one with the lowest just look at this separate facts and then comes to our own conclusion don't just look at one thing that says oh you can get all the nutrients located like from vegan like yes you can get all the nutrients but you can't absorb them so if i so if i give you a salary and you say i send you to your bank account one thousand pounds and you are in the uk or i give you ten thousand swedish crowns and then you have to go to the bank change it the currency the different days might have different exchange rates you have to pay a uh, commission to the bank so you'll never you just don't know how much you're going to get every month but if i give you your currency into your bank account it's fixed so that's how nutrient density works if i eat the steak i know exactly i'm gonna get b12 i'm gonna get iron i'm gonna get protein i'm gonna get the creatine carne carne like all those amazing nutrients it's 
safety. It's 100% sure. And I eat, I can eat a lot less food. A lot, a lot less food. You eat so much less. When you are on a nutrient density, you eat so much less because you don't need to eat 20 types of food on the same plate to try and combine things and try and somehow have a tasty meal. You eat a steak and then, okay, maybe some veggies, maybe an orange, maybe a piece of cheese. That's it, that's all you need. Simple. So what I invite you to do, instead of doing a veganary or whatever it's called, vegan January, do a nutrient dense lifestyle. Not just in January, but for the rest of your life and you're going to be 100% fine, healthy and more in harmony with nature and the environment. And that's all I have to say, but I would like to know your comments below what you think. Even if you're a vegan and you don't agree with me, I'm happy to hear your arguments and uh, open a conversation. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and if you need help to transition into a nutrient dense diet, I'm a certified uh, personal trainer, life coach and nutritional coach, so please get in touch, I can help you get in the best shape in help if, to get your healthiest version of yourself. And uh, please subscribe to my channel, I'm almost there with a thousand subscribers and all that. Share this video and I'll see you next time, bye!